Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. Happy Tuesday morning. It's a transformational Tuesday, and we have Tino Franco uh, on one of the first interviews he's done since being on The Bachelorette last year, and of course he did uh, Nick Vial's podcast, but now we've got him months later, after tons of therapy, he mentions in this podcast, um, therapy was actually his biggest expense. Maybe Tino has something to teach us as we listen. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, patreon.com slash Dave Neal for behind the scenes bonus content. I'll be live at 10 a.m. this morning on the private membership community and every afternoon, Bachelor Rush Hour, the hit podcast, bachelorrushhour.com for original content that we never got to today. There's always a lot to talk about in Bachelor Nation. So we've got Tino Franco, and he's on the Rose Pricks podcast. He's going to mention some very interesting things. Um, the ladies of the Rose Pricks podcast are Tino Franco fans, not exactly have the highest opinion of Rachel Recchia. Um, of course, Tino does a very good job of sharing his story without throwing her under the bus, and that's really good to see in hindsight. Also, he discusses Zach's season and how Tino Franco relates to Gabby from Zach's season. We'll get into that. Plus, he does talk about the cheating, and um, all of that. So let's get into it right now. Of course, listen to the full podcast. It's here. He's here for the right reasons, Tino Franco, their Monday episode. And this is Rose Pricks, a Bachelor Roast. So we're going to get into it right now. And I have to tell you guys, a lot of times these sorts of interviews are a big nothing burger. Um, not specifically this podcast, but just in general, it's like, there's only so much meat on the bone, but Tino's done a pretty good job of staying out of the limelight. And we're finally hearing what he has to say and whatnot, how the show works. So from Cecily, in my perspective, we're watching the show, we're seeing Rachel having like meltdowns and in our opinion, acting really bratty. And mm -hmm. there was one and narcissistic situation. would be the word. Narcissistic was the word that kept coming up for us. That's how we, well, we just felt like, you know, she really has that like main character energy the whole time, <laughs> right? Like why is Gabby and even here? That was, that was just our opinion. You don't even have to agree or disagree. Okay. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> what I was saying, Tino's learned a lot from therapy. The best answer is a no answer. Sometimes curious <laughs> about, I think a lot of viewers were is like during that scene where it's Gabby's date and Rachel starts freaking out and crying. And like, why isn't anybody paying attention to me? Why aren't people coming over to me? And then she goes and lectures all the guys. It always <laughs> seemed to us that all of the guys were like, whoa, like, what do we even, how do we handle this? And I'm so curious as to what your impression was of that. Cause obviously you already liked her at that point. Yeah. I, at that point, I think a lot of us just kind of were like, okay, we need to kind of remember why we're here a lot of the time. And it mm -hmm. is for her, even though that like situation might've been like seemingly out of the blue a little mm -hmm. bit or, um, you know, like a little bit colorful, I think at the same time, like, you know, there's a lot of like, things that were going on on the date that might have just kind of provoked those sort of feelings where like you know the guys i if i remember correctly not only were they boxing for gabby but they were like saying like love poems first and you know <laughs> any normal person who's like watching that right in front of you and like you know you have like a group of people next to you who's like you know more entertained by that like maybe it provokes like a little bit of a you know reaction but Great, you know, and of course, you got to listen to the full thing. We're just playing snippets here. But yeah, it's the Claire Crowley effect. You know, of course, Claire Crowley on her season had that sort of moment too when the guys weren't jumping to attention to to hang with her. It's It doesn't mean that it's a bad person. There's anxieties there. There's like, a, you know, feeling like a, you're not worthy, imposter syndrome. So much can go on. So for Tino to uh, dive a little bit deeper away from that initial reptilian reaction to be like, oh, what a B word. You know what I mean? Rather than just say that, he goes, okay, well, you know, they're not getting much sleep. They're competing. They're doing all these things. Like, yeah, you know, um, you know, uh, it, it's fair to feel emotions. When it was getting down to the wire, there were only a few of you left, fantasy suites. So they showed you being upset about Rachel going on other dates, which Cecily and I felt like was very justifiable. Yeah, uh, I stand by that. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Who? Yeah, I, sure. I mean, I believe that Cecily and I were literally dedicating <laughs> rants about like, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want somebody who's not like, oh, you're going to go possibly sleep with someone else. Cool. Cool. Have a great time. Uh, <laughs> Let just, me see. I'm not even going to bug you totally. about it. Like, of course you're going to be like, well, this is kind of, if, if you really were feeling real feelings for Rachel, which I know you were, of course you're going to be upset about, why wouldn't you be, did, did you resent the fact that they painted that like some kind of toxic trait? No, if I was doing podcasts, I'd stand by that because like, and the thing that like a lot of people conveniently avoid because, you know, I, I ended up kind of the uh, bad guy is like, I didn't put Rachel on blast, you know, like, what did you do with the other guys? Because at that point, like I did understand, like it was none of my business and it was very easy to, you know, just focus on me and her and leave everything else aside. Otherwise I would have never made it as far as I did if I couldn't do that. But yeah, I mean, if you're asked the question, like I, I have to imagine, and we were very impacted with like what made the cut because we had twice as many people, but you saw it with Eric, you you saw it with anybody. Like if you're asked a pointed question, like how do you feel about them spending the night with other guys? It has nothing to do with how intimate they are. You saw it with everyone as Axe Girls, which I applaud them for. Like, mm-hmm. you're upset about it. Like, nobody's cheering it on. So he says, yeah, I mean, no one's, you, you, no one's like, oh, let me, let me help you hook up with these other men. But at the same time, he knew what he signed up for. So he vented his gripes to the producers and didn't shame Rachel. And uh, pff, boy, probably better than I could have ever done. So very interesting to hear that Zach relates to Gabby from... I'm sorry. Very interesting to hear that Tino re- relates to Gabby from Zach's season. You didn't see this, but the entire they showed him in the shower every single at the beginning for some reason of every yeah, episode. Did that great. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, OK, so sure. You yeah. didn't you didn't feel bad for Gabby that he announced the, this Gabby, our Ga- the Gabby from Zach's season. Oh, of course I did that. I I totally I, I saw so much in like you know, if she listens to this, don't take this offensively when I did this, Gabby, but, uh, you know, I saw so much of myself and like a lot of like the things that they aired, like the, the insecurity during fantasy suite week, like mm-hmm. totally, totally spot on with that. Um, the objection she had to that being publicized and kind of aired out what like went down between them two. I made that super clear on my season that I was not okay with that, not comfortable with that. And I even said, I don't want to ever know to this Mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. I've never crystal clear found out what went down between any of the other contestants and the person I was with. And I never need to like that. That's just plague of the, you know, that's just a disease of the mind at that point. How fascinating. Yeah. Trust, trust us, Tina. We don't know what down, what went down in Rachel and Zach's fantasy suite either. Uh, no one, you know, one has said anything. Of, of course, we've all had our opinions here, but that's a, that's probably a very healthy way to look at it. Now you might be in a relationship on the bachelor where the lead and where Rachel and Tina both agree. All right, we're going to be open and say exactly what happened. And that's fine. But you might be somebody like Katie from uh, Zach's season, who clearly didn't want to know. She wanted to disassociate from whatever Zach did with Gabby, but she wasn't given that choice. So it really, it's really important to communicate your expectations in those moments. All right, well, let's get to the cheating. That's what we're all here for. So just to catch you guys up, here's my belief of what went down. You guys can comment if you think of something different. But Rachel and Tino obviously had a very tough challenge post-engagement during that bubble period where they were still together but they couldn't let people know. They could only see each other randomly at safe house visits. Rachel is being tugged all around for podcast interviews and doing all these different promotional things, which I'm sure led to her having a ton of anxiety just from seeing how she reacted on the show. And then Tino's got his own issues. And, you know, uh, Rachel can't necessarily relate to him and he can't necessarily relate to her. The relationship probably was in a rough patch. Maybe the only reason it was staying together is because they didn't want to break up before the final airing and they wanted to give it the old college try in public, kind of like Katie and Blake, right? They, they didn't know until they got to the public if it was going to work out. Well, Tino goes to a bar. I don't know if he was drunk or not. I would be fascinated to hear if he was, and he kisses somebody. You're going to hear the podcast host 
kind of give, not Tino a pass, but just say you've been treated worse in the response from people than the crime that you committed. Now, that crime could definitely be a deal breaker in a relationship, in a normal relationship where you're not in the public eye, your partner either moves on or you guys get over it and then you can move on with your life. In this kind of scenario, it's leading to a level of public shame probably leave a comment let me know that is far greater than the crime committed yes although we yeah. kind of guessed you i guess Steph, right yeah like we I yeah mean, it seemed it seemed really obvious it was going to be you but it's speaking of that let's just talk about um what happened what what because we did not turn on you in the least just want you to know that <laughs> you know it's the, <laughs> so but so you you after the show so you guys you know choose each other or whatever. And then you're having some problems. I think that's, you both discussed that having some issues of her feeling like I want to slow things down. I don't want to be engaged. You go to a bar, right? Kiss somebody. That's all that happened. I'm pretty sure that's all that happened because I oh, think no, the person would have, right? <laughs> so <laughs> then you have to tell Rachel that do you think it was unfair? Cecily and I feel like it was extremely unfair. You were in a really weird situation. And I would imagine that the reason that you told her was because you don't want it to come out another way. You don't want that girl to come or whatever. You just want to be honest. And it sounded to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that you were hurting from like, this was sort of an insecure relationship at this point. Bingo. What's happening. You don't know where where it's going right you don't know yeah, if it's i mean it's it's tough because like i mean as much like i just never really think about it or like the show anymore um because like life is just like so amazing like you know you get to live like i mean like not you like <laughs> you just like like One. i look at it's like not amazing I, the, for me kinda, the thing <laughs> <laughs> well i mean you guys have an amazing podcast yeah i'm so. just kidding life is amazing of course but, um, I guess like the best way to put it is like kind of in that same regard I was talking about earlier where you kind of like get above yourself and kind of look down like, mm -hmm. you know, I love where I live. I love the job I'm on. My coworkers and boss are amazing. Like, so, and like the, not, what's the best way to say this? The dating situation I'm in right now is so amazing that like, there's just kind of like not a lot to complain about. and. I don't want to get greedy and be like, oh, but like if I did it differently, like something that I never expected, like I would have gotten something I never expected or wanted, you know, mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of Instagram followers or whatever money they're making off of that. Like I just, it was never in my game plan anyway. So it's hard to get upset about something that I never planned for. And it also sounds like he's not willing to say how he feels, which is everything happens for a reason. It led me to a much healthier place, which is good. But I'm sure he just doesn't want to say anything that's going to besmirch Rachel. It worked out right. the way it was supposed to. It worked out. It led you to the right person is what but you're still, saying. still in the moment, personal, it was unfair. Yeah. So my personal opinion about it is like, did I feel like the crime fit the punishment? I mean, at that point, we were like a month or more broken up. I wasn't that upset about like, <laughs> like, like I wasn't upset like, oh, if like, which they didn't, but like if her and Avon started dating, like, right? Like it's like. Okay, so he's referring to the part where once they broke up a month later, it was the after the final rose and they brought Avon out to give Rachel a hug when Tino was sitting right there. I still don't think they meant to do that. I think during the live taping, they were supposed to pull Tino out. If they were meant to do that, I wish I wish whoever made that decision that karma is a, you know, a, a mother effort to them because that was a cruel and cruel thing to do um let's go to two more clips here again i always recommend you check out the full podcast here rose pricks well uh, and it, the the show i don't actually fault that much i think there's a lot that contestants and leads drive and that's that's all i'll say on like kind of like how the afr thing played out but at the same time like there was like so there was a I think therapy was my biggest expense last year, like my <laughs> biggest non like work related expense, because I, for a while I was seeing my new psychologist like twice a week. 
And then I dialed that back to once a week and now it's every, every other week. And I still look forward to like talking to her every time, but I, you know, there was a long time where I think what we talked about was like this moral conundrum I was having where I felt like I did. And like, I'm sure like a lot of people like Zach and Clayton probably had to deal with like a similar issue where it's like, I really believe I did the right thing. And I do not understand like the reaction that happened or like the consequences of this. Like it it was very like troubling, especially seeing like kind of how this experience has played out for like certain, like I'm in like kind of a tight knit group of like people who, you know, and I hope I don't get like hate mail for this, but who have won the show. Right. Mm -hmm. So even the, like the leads never understand that they don't understand, like, like Zach doesn't understand how Katie felt those last four months. He doesn't. So Mm -hmm. it's like, it was very like troubling in the sense that like, I see what his, what this experience has like really made certain people's lives, like seemingly flourish or, you know, open so many avenues and they seem like really happy or good things are happening to them. And like, for a while I was like, this was the biggest regret of my life. Like, I wish I never went on this. Um, and it wasn't because I was getting hate. No, it was like more just because like, you know, you have this like family and this person you think like, or these not family, but like friends, Mm-hmm. and this girlfriend fiance whatever you want to call him that you like trust and like feel like you have like these real relationships with and then it just like kind of like just turns into this monster that's like haunting you and that right there like that i think like really was like the cornerstone of my therapy journey that and like kind of understanding like because i know it was like a situation where certain people have been like I don't consider that cheating. I don't think you did anything wrong. But at the same time, like whether or not it was like, let's say cheating, it was like a very toxic and unhealthy outlet moving forward Mm -hmm. to immediately have a relationship end here, not process anything and then go kiss somebody else. It almost sounds like he knew the relationship with Rachel was over, or at least there was writing on the wall. But it's fascinating here because he's not, he's not towing the line. He's, sharing his opinion and this is where it gets really tough to like share how you feel without throwing someone else under the bus i think he does a really good job with this when he talks about it turning into a monster it sounds like what he's talking about is the publicity monster um and the monster of fame the sort of um energy that it gives rachel that can be um anxiety and uh, you know, Rachel, of course, on this past season had something unlike any other season where she's competing for the attention of Bachelor Nation with her co a star, Gabby Windy. Now, Gabby, of course, got Dancing with the Stars and a lot more opportunity, I would say, than Rachel got. And even though Rachel might not have wanted some of those um, some of those things, I'm sure it weighed heavily on her. And then Zach had, uh, uh, excuse me, Tino had to sort of pay that price as he just waited quietly in the wings while he watched his um, significant other soar. Now, it's a tough thing because we should all want our significant other to soar. And at the same time, Tino's had to work out what those feelings are. Fascinating interview. Go check out the whole thing. Roast Pricks, a Bachelor Roast, anywhere you listen to podcasts. And don't forget, Tino's been on the show promoting his different charities. He's got a link to it. Oh, that's an old that's an old video. But he's got a link to his charities. Um, and um, uh, I think if you go to Roast Pricks here, hold on, let me try to find it here. I want to make sure we give this the energy it deserves. Yeah, there it is. So Rose Perks podcast, they had Tino on and he plugged two charities near and dear to him, Camp Ronald McDonald and the Children with Hair Loss charity. If you can donate to those, that would be fantastic. Make some good come out of this otherwise very complicated situation. Let me know what you think. we got more content coming your way, including Love is Blind updates, and I have a special announcement. I'm getting into the Vanderpump Rules game, so I'll have some content coming to you over there. We'll be back right after this.